Nailed him. We ain't just surviving. We're thriving. Should we make a cactus lizard taco? I've eaten a lot of lizards and none of them tend to taste very good. Oh, listen to this. Fire with a magnifying glass. Right here, we've got another wild edible. It is poisonous and it probably will kill you. This property is absolutely crawling with rattlesnakes. And while I'm wearing snake boots, one that big can strike right over them. And just like that, you've got a snare. Our only source of water looks absolutely disgusting. Look at that sliminess. Headed back out into the wild. And all we've got to survive are the contents of this sling pack here. So let's see what we've got. Got a water bottle with some fishing line on it. Hammock. Small knife. Flashlight, a little bit of toilet paper, magnifying glass, got a sling bow, three arrows and broadheads, and the release for it. And then I've got one can of tuna. So I'm kind of in a dilemma here. Do I eat this can of tuna? Or do I use it for bait and try to catch something bigger? I don't know. I might have to think about it a little bit. But that's all the contents of the sling pack. That is all I've got to survive. I've got nothing in my pockets. And I have no idea how long I'm going to be out here. It could be out here a few days. It could be a few weeks. But first things first, let's see if that sling bow will shoot. So... I've never actually hunted with a sling bow. I've, I've had some really expensive sling bows. I've had some cheap ones. Uh, that one's right in the middle. I suspect it's gonna work a lot better than me trying to make a bow and arrow and all the time that would take. This thing is really compact. You can put it in just about anything. I mean, it'd fit in a fanny pack. Uh, it'd be really good for taking out for survival. It's really small, lightweight. These arrows break down into three pieces. Uh, it's really, it's really handy. But let's do some shooting with this sling bow and see if we could actually hit anything. Just got one of these arrows put together. It's nothing fancy. But I think it should work. The broadheads are really sharp. Pull weight's probably, I don't know. Pull weight's probably close to 35, 30 pounds. Hopefully we can get a hog or an axis deer or a raccoon. Heck, I'll take just about anything with this thing just to get us some food. All right, let's take some shots with it. shoots pretty fast. Could just be because the arrows are pretty lightweight. But... Alright, let's see if I can hit this cactus pedal. I'm going to put it on that dirt mound there. Got it. All right, let's try something quite a bit farther. It's closer to 30 yards. I'm gonna aim for that end pedal right there on the big cactus right there, on the far right side.
a little low. One thing that does concern me is I've only got three arrows and with these joints in them, I'm not real sure how durable they're gonna be. Hopefully they'll get us through this survival trip. All right, so I'm gonna go for that same end pedal again. I'm gonna have to aim a little higher. That was just a little bit low. That thing went really deep into the base of that cactus. All right, I'm gonna take one more shot here just to make sure we're dialed in. Oh. Bullseye. We are dialed in with the sling bow. Can't really afford to lose any arrows in this situation. I've only got three. Look at that, right through the pedal I was aiming at, and then it skipped off out here into the pasture. Oh, there it is. Point seems to be holding up pretty good too. All right, now I gotta find a place to set up our hammock and then I gotta try and get a fire going. We're right at the transition between winter and summer here in Texas. I wouldn't call it spring because we don't really have a spring. It's actually already crossing my mind to eat that can of tuna. I, I got dropped off out here on this property pretty early and I didn't eat anything yet today. I've got that one bottle of water, but luckily there's a water source on this property, but we're gonna have to boil it because it's definitely not clean. I'm very fortunate to have this hammock because if not, we'd be sleeping in the fire ants. Fire ants are terrible here in this area. All right, this isn't ideal, but it's what we've got. I think I'm gonna try and stretch my hammock from this limb here over to that limb right there. Should work. Not a whole lot of options in these mesquites. Oh yeah, and one thing I forgot to mention, this property is absolutely crawling with rattlesnakes. So, as long as this hammock is out of the striking distance of a rattlesnake, uh, it's questionable. I should be all right. Let's see if we can get a fire going with that magnifying glass. I'm gonna go ahead and gather some grass here, and some small sticks. Uh, just in case we can get a fire going. I'm not 100% confident it's been raining here for like the last three or four days, so it's gonna make it challenging. So for those of you that didn't know, toilet paper actually has more than one use. It makes great fire tinder. You just wanna Get these little ends like this and rough them up so that it can catch the ember and then we're gonna hopefully transfer the ember from this toilet paper into this dry grass here and then I've got some larger sticks here we'll throw in there if we can get the fire going all right got an area of full sun here I've never started a fire with a magnifying glass, or at least since I was a kid. Uh, let's see what we can do with it here. You just gotta focus. Should be a focus point there where it makes it the hottest. There we go, I got smoke. Got some smoke going there. Smoke is still a long way from fire.
now the most delicate part. I've just got to nurse this ember into a flame. Very gently. Very gently. This is definitely the part of the fire making process you do not want to rush. can see that embers growing in there we're making some progress here and boom just like that we've got fire I think in a really long-term survival situation, it would be pretty hard to beat a magnifying glass as your main, as your main fire starter or maybe a backup because as long as the sun's shining and you don't let this thing get too scratched up, you've got fire. I think one of the more important parts of survival is not overdoing yourself and getting exhausted. You gotta save energy out here. So we don't waste a bunch of energy. We're gonna wait and go hunting this afternoon and hopefully we can get something to roast over that campfire we just worked so hard for. So I think I've made the decision on the tuna. Typically, I would wanna ration this and make it last as long as possible, but once I open this can, I'm pretty sure it's going to ruin since it's fish. I don't think I can make this last a couple days. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to eat half of it this afternoon. Then I'm going to use the other half for bait. And hopefully we can bait in a raccoon or a skunk, maybe a fox. Something with more meat than what's in this can. Sure, in a survival situation, you could go a pretty dang long period of time without eating but there's no fun in that so my backup plan is here we've got these prickly pear cactuses everywhere but the fruits aren't even close to being ripe yet but these young petals like this these things will be great roasted over the fire absolutely delicious i'm just hoping we get some red meat to go along with it but these should definitely be a great source of carbohydrates sugars and luckily these young ones don't really have thorns growing up yet so you can just grab them with your fingers ouch yeah, I spoke too soon they do have little thorns but it's not too bad I think I'm gonna wait till tonight and we're gonna roast those up after dark, after we go hunting. So since I don't have a pan to fry them in, I'm just gonna find a small mesquite limb like this to roast them over the fire with. All right, that should work. I'm just gonna skewer them on this stick. So I forgot my GoPro hat. Desperate times call for desperate measures let's go hunting just kidding not yet I've actually I got to gather enough firewood to get me through the night because I definitely don't want to be reaching around here in these areas in the dark grabbing stuff with all the rattlesnakes and you might be wondering why don't I just go snake hunting try to find some rattlesnakes to eat I mean, sure, if the opportunity comes along and one presents itself, we're gonna eat it, but it's not something I would really want. All right, let's find some firewood. Oh, 
just a deer antler. We might be able to use that for something. It has warmed up super fast out here. It's getting probably close to 100 and it was really cold when we started out this morning. Check this out. <sighs> Almost looks like it was a homemade knife at one point. It's definitely sturdy enough metal. So this area on the ranch where I'm at right here was once ruled by the Comanche tribe. There's definitely a chance that that was a crude knife made by a Comanche warrior. It'd be, it'd be a good skin and blade for skin and buffalo. I mean, there's always that possibility that that's what that was because it's it's got the right shape and the it's about the right thickness of material and about the right age. Never know out here. burning through our water supply. Let's go check the creek and see what our natural water supply looks like. Got some really thick brush to walk through here. Something running. There was something else at the water hole. Hopefully it comes back later. Well, this is what our only water looks like. Our only source of water looks absolutely disgusting. Look at this. There's been beavers in it, hogs wallering. But any water is better than no water. Right, I gotta fill my water bottle up. Now, while I'm extremely fortunate to have the steel knife with me, I could pretty easily knock a blade out of this piece of chert here and fine tune it with that deer horn we've got um, and make a blade within minutes good enough to skin a deer with. It's just proof that it's more about what you got up here than what you bring with you because the more you know, the less stuff you got to carry. And it's always good to know during a Emergency. I mean, it's pretty common to lose a knife. All right. Well, I'm starving. So we're gonna do this. I need to save all this juice to hopefully attract some animals. Oh, that stinks. Look at that. I really hate tuna. Ugh. Just gonna eat half of it. I've definitely eaten worse things. Most definitely, I've had a lot better things. But, some much needed calories. Hmm. My fingers are going to smell great. Oh yeah. And there has been a bear sighting recently within a mile of here. So hopefully he doesn't roll me up like a fish taco tonight in that hammock. All right. Ain't about half of it. Let's go put it out for bait. So I'm thinking I'm going to set it out not far from where I'm camping where maybe I'll hear a raccoon or something or I can just shine my flashlight from my hammock over there and see it because they're not really scared of people. Gonna set it right here and spread a little bit of the juice around and hopefully I'll hear them rattling this can around while they're eating it. Alright, it's time to go hunting. I'm gonna get the sling bow ready. Alright, let's go see what we can find. I'm hoping something will come right down this trail here. I'll get a five or six yard shot at it. 
Look at all the fruits on this cactus. And here in a few months, that is gonna be an absolute awesome food supply. Can't sit in one place too long or the fire ants will eat you alive. Especially when you got tuna all over you. Kinda having flashbacks in the spot. I killed about a five foot rattlesnake right here. And while I'm wearing snake boots, one that big can strike right over them. I'm just waiting on something to come down one of these trails in this thick, thick brush here. Hopefully give me a close shot. Well, the sun is starting to set. Probably gonna hunt throughout the night. Pretty much all night. Uh, pretty excited about it because I'm not scared of the dark or anything. But we have much better chances in the dark at getting something. That's definitely a Comanche moon right there. I underestimated how cold it was gonna be out here. I gotta get the fire built back up and I'm gonna actually move it right here closer to the hammock. I uh, didn't get any shots last night. I did see a lot of things. That's much better. I needed that. Luckily we still had enough coals to get it going over here. I didn't let it go all the way out last night. Let's go see if anything ate my tuna. Well that was a waste. <sighs> Something picked it clean and I never heard it last night. Dang it. Maybe he'll be back tonight. Let's go on a little walk, see if we can find anything to shoot. If not, we're gonna come back and roast some cactus. Those are pretty fresh. Definitely been some activity in the area. Well, it's good to know we've got some of these plants in the area. They make great arrows. I didn't see anything. This is going to be harder than I thought. This fire feels so good. Probably got down in the 40s last night, which is cold for here. Dang dove wanted to be my breakfast. It's too bad they're not in season. And that's breakfast. Hopefully the smoke will give it a little bit of flavor. I'm just gonna skewer it here on this mesquite stick that we cut yesterday. Some really good Coals going on this fire. I'm just gonna cook it long enough to break down that membrane inside there and make it a little more tender. Take the sliminess away, hopefully. And take off any of those little thorns that got us yesterday. Maybe I can find a scorpion, some grasshoppers. You might think this is crazy, but scorpions are actually delicious. You just gotta look under logs and stuff like this. That's a good place to find a scorpion. Ooh, look at all those termites. It's kind of crazy how when I'm not looking for scorpions, they're everywhere. But now that I want one for breakfast, nowhere to be seen. Still got a few little hair thorns on there that I need to try and scrape off. They actually sell these things in grocery stores around here. The, I think they eat them quite regularly in Mexico. But look at that sliminess. really good texture is what gets most people on that stuff but 
That is very good. That tastes like you can put that right in your fajitas. And the good news is we've got a near endless supply of those things because as far as I can see on this property, it's just miles and miles of cactus. But that is delicious. I'm probably going to eat like 10 of those things this morning just to get me going. Look at this. Mm. Well, I just found me a good rock. I'll put that over the coals whenever we get something to put on it, hopefully. So right here, we've got another wild edible. We've got thistle. You can recognize it by these purple flowers here and the real spiny leaves. It is all over this region and good thing about it is you don't have to cook it. You can steam it, but you just normally peel the stalk and eat it like celery. Uh, one other cool thing about it is the Cherokee tribe actually used the, this little tuft here. They dry that out and use it to make their blow darts. But I'm going to harvest some of this real quick and then we're going to try it out and see how it tastes. You want to be really careful to stay away from those spines because they're extremely sharp. All right, let's give it a try here. Kind of, it's kind of got like a sweet taste to it. I don't know, almost sweet and salty. Uh, it does remind me a lot of celery. But one thing you want to watch out for when you cut into a plant like this to make sure it is edible, if it ever has like a white milk coming out of it, it is poisonous and it probably will kill you. And here we've got some of the cactus flowers starting to bloom. Um, most colorful flowers are poisonous, but these are not. Uh, you can stir fry these up or just eat them raw like this. They're, they're really good. It's actually probably my favorite thing to eat out here. These, these things are so good. Mm, nice and fresh. I really need to try to build us some traps so that they can be out working while we're not. Need to try and see if we can scavenge some materials to build some traps out of. And here we've got some bank line, some trot line string. Hopefully it's not too rotted. Ooh, looks like we got a good amount of it too. Uh, there's never even been anybody fish in this area. It's just from the floods bringing it down, I guess. But I'm very thankful for it. Should be able to... We should be able to make a snare out of this stuff. Okay. Got a good amount of rope here. Snare is the easiest trap you can build out here. Just need to get about a, I don't know, two or three foot piece of rope. Tie a knot in it. Make a small loop. Then run it back through the loop and just like that, you got a snare. I'm gonna make three or four of these and just gonna find some good spots to set them along these trails here. See here we've got a good spot that I can secure to that limb and then leave the noose over this trail. And then you just wanna hang it like that and then put some logs around this trail to make sure they have to walk through that. But you wanna hang it right head height like that and a little bigger than the size of the animal's head that you're after. And we're after raccoons. They've got a real, real fatty meat, kind of like a bear. All right, I'm gonna set a bunch of these and I'll be back. Just cleaning the pan. So late summer, there'll be a lot more food in this region once the mesquite beans start making and the pecans start falling. This area will be rich in protein sources. Pretty much what we've got now has had no protein. 
we're gonna have to get some meat. So here's an idea of what's inside of those larger cactus petals. This is the membrane out of it. That would be extremely tough to eat. Well, that lizard literally just crawled right in the campfire. So fast, though, I, I couldn't catch him. But that gives me an idea. Let's break the sling bow out and try to shoot a lizard. I'm just going to ease along through the shade here. and Hopefully, we can find us one of those lizards. There's a lizard right there. I'm going to take a long shot here so we don't spook it. I can't take any chances. They're too fast. Nailed him. I think about cut him in half. I can't show that. YouTube will take my ads away. I'm just gonna cook him just like this. We need all the nutrition, all the protein we can get out here. It's definitely not gonna be delicious. And that's lunch. All right, these coals here are still extremely hot. I'm just gonna lay them here on the coals. Oh, little nerves going there. Please don't demonetize me. This thing has transitioned from the animal world to the food world. It's cooking pretty fast. Just gotta cook him good enough to kill all the parasites in him. We should be able to eat him, skin, bones and all. I'm gonna put some more cactus on the fire too. So I got a little bit of a side snack to go with it. Got our lizard over there cooling. Mmm, cactus and lizard. What's not to love? And for lunch here, we have a nice cactus salad with a side of lizard. My blood sugar is getting extremely low. Lizard with a side of cactus. And that's dinner. Should we make a cactus lizard taco? It's not, it don't look too bad, does it? No. All right, let's just eat this lizard by itself. I've eaten a lot of lizards, and none of them tend to taste very good. But I need the protein. I'm starting to get a little bit weak. Here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. Pretty gross. Mm. See if the tail's any better. So we went head first on that one. Ugh, it's terrible. Oh, listen to this. That lizard was strong, guys. Wash them down with some cactus here. This cactus is so good. Just gotta make sure to get all the thorns off of it. Mm. It's 
crazy that after going so long without eating, just that small of a meal can make you feel full. But I know I haven't had near enough calories for today. We're gonna have to get some red meat. We're gonna have to get something real, something with high fat content. We've got the sun starting to set here. I did just see an axis deer, but he was way out of range and there was no way I could get close enough. But now the real hunting begins as the sun goes down. The desert's gonna come alive. Well, I just had a pretty good sized group of pigs come in. They came right by my camp. Uh, I don't know, there was probably 20 pigs in that group. I drew the sling bow back and I, I put an arrow in one. It was literally a definition of a shot in the dark. I couldn't see anything, but we've got decent blood here. That was definitely a rough night, but probably about midnight, a huge group of hogs came through camp. Probably close to 20, maybe 30 pigs. And I got lucky. One of them gave me a shot and I took it probably about a 15 yard shot and that arrow went completely through that pig decided to wait till this morning to track it because not because I'm scared of the dark or anything but decided to wait till this morning to track it it was a pretty chilly night so the meat should still be good let's go find our hog so we can have some hog for breakfast that first snare we set did have something in it Unfortunately, it got out. And look what I just found. I just found our breakfast. Hog with the sling bow. Well, the arrows are not very durable, as I suspected, but that one did its job. And I mean, I guess that's all they really made to do. One good kill. And a good kill this was. We ain't just surviving, we're thriving. Well, what are my opinions on the sling bow? I'm pretty impressed with the power of it. It shot completely through that pig. But is the accuracy there to use it as my primary weapon? I, I don't think so, but I think it would be a good backup or a good survival weapon as it proved last night. So one reason it would not be a good long-term survival situation weapon, well, first off, the arrows are pretty flimsy. I mean, sure, you could make arrows out here, but are they going to be as good as those? Probably not. Uh, second would be band life deterioration. These bands don't last forever. And the sunlight and heat, they really deteriorate quick. I mean, you're gonna have to replace these things every few months probably. So that should be enough meat to last me at least a week, but I've gotta figure out how to preserve it. So I've read about the Comanches. They were taken bend over like a small mesquite tree or a small thorn bush like this and tie it down and then build a small fire underneath and smoke and preserve the meat overnight. I think that's what we're gonna do. All right, coals have burned down enough. Let's cook some breakfast. Finally about done. We did it. We survived with the sling bow. All right guys, my breakfast is about done here. Then I gotta get the rest of that meat smoked. I'm probably still gonna be out here another week or so, but that's it for today's video. Till next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Definitely, don't forget to click that like and subscribe button. And I'll see y'all later.